SERIN stands for Socio-Ecological Reindustrialization. So the idea there is that we're trying to find the best and most sustainable ways that old and new work practices and new businesses can be started to provide employment in local areas for local people in a very ecologically and sustainable way. The SERIN seminar we organised is part of a pan-European project. It's coordinated by the Green European Foundation and there are seven other national green foundations working together on this project. And the whole idea about this is that people are trying to work in a more sustainable way and many of the new, new technologies are allowing old manufacturing that was traditionally um, practiced in, in areas of Europe that migrated out because of labour costs, it's allowing them to come back uh, to areas where they were originally used with the use of this new uh, technology. Jerry Farrell, who's Dean and Director at DIT, welcomed all the delegates. Tommy Simpson, Director and a man who put in a huge amount of organisational effort and whose idea this Serind sem- event was, then welcomed people. We were lucky then to have Christy Burke, Lord Mayor of Dublin, who put particular emphasis on the importance of the seminar because of its uh, potential to deliver local work to local people where it's particularly needed. Any seminar such as the one that's here today must be welcomed. And it must be welcomed to the fact that uh, what, what, what's, what's hopefully going to happen with the foundation is to promote uh, and support and get back in political back and in particularly uh, for sustainable employment in the area. Corinne O'Connor then uh, from the Docklands Innovation, uh, one of our partners in the project, provided an overview of the work of Docklands Innovation and we're delighted to have Docklands Innovation as a partner on the project. The first session was titled New Technology and Localization of Work. This session um, focused on the changes in technology, the changes in working conditions and the opportunities were there to create and bring back a lot of manufacturing jobs back to original locations and to create new sustainable jobs. We're fortunate to have Dave Fodden who's of Eurofund and he looked at particular studies and research and information that was available from a European perspective that informed the debate. Uh, we had Tony Murphy from the Ideas Institute, again who are preparing a programme of work and ideas where workers can really participate and develop solutions, whether, whether they're facing redundancy or whether they're trying to get new jobs created, ideas that can really boost the potential of businesses to, to be formed and to get workers to pay a large part in, in that development. Tommy Simpson looked at the new technology, the idea of 3D printing and other new technologies. How can we relocalise work? Up to now, we, you know, it's been difficult. You know, there has been dependence on capital-intensive industry. But the technology is now enabling things to happen and manufacture, be manufactured at a local level. And this hasn't happened before. Hilary Wainwright is the editor of the Red Pepper magazine and is UK-based. She has extensive experience in looking at worker conditions and in the ways workers can contribute to the development of businesses and organisations. And she's written many um, articles and books on the subject. This idea of, of, of workers' organisations taking the initiative to convert the, um, the use of their skills and the use of the machinery they work with for socially useful purposes, I think has huge relevance now when we think about how do we, how do we convert um, the present kind of high carbon economy to a low carbon economy to an uh, environmentally sustainable economy. The technology now enables a real possibility of collaboration, of sharing the practical knowledge which we saw with the Combine Committee at Lucas Aerospace, but which was then crushed by the old centralised sort of institutions. The second session was titled Solutions Offered by Technology. It was chaired by Nessa Childers, independent MEP. The speakers we had were Kieran Cuff, who's a lecturer in DIT, and Kieran focused on the potential that urban regeneration can offer in terms of sustainable businesses and opportunities for local employment. What my colleagues did here in DIT, in the Dublin School of Architecture, they looked at these buildings and said, well look, 
could we bring this building up to an A3 energy rating? And the amazing discovery that they made was, not only can you do this, but you can do it at 40% of the cost of a new build. Sue Duke, who's Director of European Public Policy at LinkedIn, talked about how data collected by groups such as LinkedIn can be used to inform the market and organise labour in a proactive way so that employment can be supplied in a sustainable way in urban areas. What LinkedIn wants to do over the next 10 years is create an economic graph. The economic graph is basically a digital map of the labour market so that the connections between jobs and companies and people can be brought to life in a way that economists haven't been able to do before. Roland Stelzer is the CEO of Happy Labs in Vienna and he talked about how they're using new technology, how they're using those laboratories to create new opportunities for small and medium-sized operations in Vienna and provide local employment. So the 3D printers are rather a symbol for, for the personal fabrication in contrast to personal computers. Uh, personal fabrication, it is in fact much more than just 3D printers. It means that digital fabrication machines become accessible. This means I draw my ideas on a computer and then I send it to a machine and the machine can produce it. The session after lunch looked at practical Dublin examples of repair, reuse and recycling. And it was chaired by Duncan Stewart. Claire Downey of the Sandy Mount Repair Cafe and who ran a repair cafe during lunchtime at the seminar talked about the practical contributions that repair cafes can make to local communities and in developing skills locally. It's really about trying to build a culture of repair. This is about looking maybe at a deeper level at um, sort of more challenging items like especially electronic equipment that's just not accessible to a lot of people. We don't uh, easily open up an iPhone and start tinkering with it. So it's trying to target really those um, electronic equipment especially, but other, other things that we wouldn't know where to start with or how to repair. Sandy Dunlop has initiated the Turn In Your Initiative, which is a community effort to explore ways in which they can improve the community and provide services and other businesses that will make a long-term contribution to that local community. What we're endeavouring to do is, in my little part of the world, um, is work to create something that people look at and go, I want a bit of that. And the stories that people most like are success stories. And that is what people want to jump on the bandwagon of, not horror stories. And Sarah Miller, CEO of Ballymun Rediscovery Centre, gave us an account of the history of the development of that organisation. She showed how they now provide reused paint, reused bicycles, reused fabrics and reconditioning of furniture and she demonstrated the huge community contribution that these new initiatives are making and providing activity, business and local employment for people in the Ballymun area. We're really hoping that the outcome of the day will begin to get local communities talking together, cooperating together and exploring with the local authority, for instance Dublin City Council, on how these new businesses can be brought into Dublin and made work. We hope to run further events in 2015 and the whole European-wide Syrind project will be developed further in 2015 to add momentum to this. So at the end of the day, we're hoping that this project will provide knowledge, information, network and connections that will enable communities right across Europe provide sustainably and socially beneficial green business and jobs to local, urban and rural communities. Each individual presentation made by every speaker is available on our website and you can access that at www.greenfoundationireland.ie